Hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to Outbreak News TV. Now today I want to go over a story about um, a researcher that was working in a lab in France who in 2010 accidentally poked herself with an instrument that was contaminated with a material that had prion on it. The, the, uh, the protein, infectious protein that um, can cause a variety of different diseases in humans and animals. Um, then come nine years later in 2019, the young lady died. And I want to tell her story and, and what's behind, uh, uh, behind the scenes of, of the whole thing. Well, let me introduce you to her first. And that's her. Her name is Emily Jamain. And this is a picture of her when she was 24 working in the lab. Um, what happened was um, she was working with, I believe it was mice. And she has some kind of a laboratory instrument in her hand. It, and it punctured two sets of gloves and it drew blood. She, of course, freaked out when this happened. And um, anyway, in 2019, at the age of 33, Emily died from variant uh, crutzfeld jakob disease. So let me go ahead and tell you what happened. Because of that, in France recently, last month, um, five public research institutions imposed a three-month moratorium on the study of prions, right? These misfolding, uh, very dangerous infectious proteins, which essentially cause fatal brain disease 100% of the time. Uh, if you get catch it, you nobody has survived it. Um, and she was working in a lab run by the National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and Environment in France when she contracted the disease. So because of this, um, her family is suing uh, the Research Institute um, for manslaughter and endangering life. And um, the labs are trying to tighten things up now because I think this is the second case in a, a relatively short period of time and, uh, and that's what we're getting out of this right now. Um, let me tell you a little bit more. Um, lab infections are known to occur in, with many pathogens, according to this report from uh, Science Magazine. But exposure to crutzfeld jakob disease, or CJD, causing prions is unusually risky because there is no vaccines or treatments and the condition is universally fatal. And whereas most infections reveal themselves within days or weeks, CJD's average incubation period is about 10 years, as in the case of uh, young Emily. Um, so yeah, they're doing some research. The, the actual uh, press release from the uh, research laboratories in France um, say that the person with crutzfeld jakob disease whose form is not yet known, right? So they're saying they don't know exactly what she has. But uh, that's not exactly true. Um, and there's a uh, study that came out in one of the um, premier... Uh, research magazines, and that would be the New England Journal of Medicine. And this was a paper, a correspondence that came out in July of 2020. And this is what the researcher says. In May 2010, when the patient was 24 years of age, she worked in a prion research laboratory where she handled frozen sections of brain of transgenic mice that overexpressed the human prion protein with methionine at codone 129. 
The mice have been infected with a sheep adapted form of BSE, um, bovine spongiform encephalopathy. During this process, she stabbed her thumb through a double pair of latex gloves with the sharp ends of a curved forceps used to handle the samples. Bleeding was noted at the puncture site. So that was in May of 2010. Uh, the correspondence continues. In November 2017, she began having burning pain in the right shoulder and neck. The pain worsened and spread to the right half of her body during the following six months. In November 2018, an examination of a sample of cerebrospinal fluid obtained from the patient was normal. MRI of the brain showed, it showed a slight increase in the fluid attenuated inversion recovery, flare, signal, in the caudets and thalami. Um, in January 2019, she became depressed and anxious and had memory impairment and visual hallucinations. There was hypertonia in her right side of her body. Uh, at that time, the analysis of CSF for 14 Three, three protein was negative. Uh, in March 2019, MRI showed an increased flare signal in pulvinar and dorsal medial nuclei of thalami. Anyway, and it goes on, and the patient died 19 months after the onset of symptoms. Uh, neuropathological examination confirmed the diagnosis of variant crutzfeld jakob disease. And now the author of this paper goes on to explain that um, there was two possible explanations for what happened to Emily. Uh, oral transmission from contaminated cattle products cannot be ruled out because the patient was born at the beginning of the French BSE outbreak in cattle. However, the last two patients who had confirmed variant CJD with methionine homozygosity at Codon 129 in France and the UK died in 2014 and 2013, respectively, which makes oral transmission unlikely. In France, the risk of variant CJD in 2019 was negligible or non-existent in the post-1969 birth cohort. And then the author goes on to talk about the more likely uh, situation. They write, percutaneous exposure to prion contaminated material is plausible in this patient. Since the prion strain she had handled was consistent with the development of variant CJD, the 7.5 year delay between the laboratory accident and her clinical symptoms is congruent with the incubation period in the transfusion transmitted form of the disease. The ability of the strain to propagate through the peripheral route has been documented and experimental studies with scrappy strains have shown that scarification and subcutaneous inoculation are effective routes. So this author clearly uh, disagrees with uh, the French laboratories who say they don't know. Um, the exact form of prion um, the individual died from. Um, however, this author does say it's uh, variant CJD. Um, let me go ahead and uh, introduce you briefly to, you know, what is variant CJD? And uh, sorry, I'm first time using this program, so I'm a little, uh, little unorganized with it right now. Uh, another thing that came out of the Science Magazine report, it says the government inspector's report concluded that Jaumain's accident was not unique. There has been at least 17 accidents among 100 or so scientists and technicians in France working with prions in the previous decade, five of whom stabbed or cut themselves with contaminated syringes or blades. Another technician at the same lab had a finger prick accident with prions in 2005, but has not yet developed variant CJD symptoms so far. Um, 
So they're saying it's shocking that no precautionary measures were taken to ensure such an accident never happens again. Uh, in Italy also, the last person to die of variant CJD was in 2016, was also a lab worker with exposure to prion infected brain tissue. Um, but the lab and the worker has not been identified. All right, let me go ahead and uh, switch over to show you a little bit about um, what prion disease is, CJD, what that is, just a real brief introduction in case you're not familiar. And CJD, variant Crisfield Jakob disease is a prion disease that was first described in 1996 in the United Kingdom. There is now uh, strong scientific evidence that the, re the agent responsible for the outbreak of prion disease in cows, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE, or mad cow disease, is the same agent responsible for the outbreak of variant CJD in humans. Variant CJD uh, is not the same disease as classic CJD. It has a different clinical and pathologic characteristics from classic CJD. Each disease also has a particular genetic profile of the protein gene. Both the disorders are invariably fatal brain diseases with unusually long incubation periods measured in years and are caused by an unconventional transmissible agent called a prion. Anyway, sad story, um, but interesting story. And we're gonna see how this plays out. Um, the French laboratories, these research laboratories will continue um, coming up with safety measures and trying to figure out what went wrong and how to make this, um, yeah, this is, this is just a very, very dangerous agent to be dealing with. And uh, the safety protocols have to be top notch for stuff like this. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy the show. I apologize for the fumbling around, still trying to um, get used to the program. And uh, I plan on doing some live streaming soon. So uh, be on the lookout for that, both on YouTube and on Facebook Live. And uh, again, I appreciate you watching. Um, comment below, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.